you've taken over Bond Street, Berber Street Station. Is this a commitment to the UK? Yeah, it, absolutely. Well, we, 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 we communicated that uh, for us, we're going to really anchor ourselves in London. We're a great British brand. Um, so we're going to celebrate that a lot more. And um, first day of London Fashion Week, what better way to take over one of our most famous tube stations, Burberry Street, that was Bond Street. So it's a, it's a great initiative. And we've got many, many things going on around the capital. So I think everybody will be very aware that we've got a show on Monday. So it's super exciting. And is this to get closer to your customer and consumer? Yeah, well, we, we've, um, we now have a, a new creative director, Daniel Lee, um, who I believe is one of the biggest talents, um, creative talents of our generation. So we're extremely lucky to have him. And he's very aligned with my vision that, you know, we need to celebrate being British. So, so I think it's uh, a, a good opportunity for us to really start talking in a, in, a, in a lot louder way in our home market. And then next month we move on to Seoul. So we're doing a very similar activation in Seoul. And then after that, Shanghai, and then back to New York. So it's a, a big multi-city activation. How's business in the UK doing? Business in the UK is obviously it's our, it's, our, it's, our, it's our market. So we've just opened uh, our fourth store in London. We just renovated our store in Bond Street, which is fantastic, super exciting. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're, we're very positive. Your chairman has had a go at the government for actually not helping luxury companies or retail companies out more with... VAT refunds. Are you missing out? Well, we're not missing out. I mean, overall, globally, our tourist sales have um, obviously been increasing in the last uh, couple of years, which is a positive. Um, so that's a good trend. Um, unfortunately, there is a gap between uh, our tourist spend growth in mainland Europe versus the UK, which is disappointing, especially as it's our home market. So we'll keep communicating that. Um, we think probably post Brexit, it, it kind of it would have been an opportunity. It would have been an opportunity to bring more, more tourists in. So we hope that um, sometime soon things will change. Will the government listen? I, I hope so. Well, we, can, we keep talking. It's not just us as well. I think you know, there is a big uh, movement to, to keep communicating about, um, about the frustration of it. But we're also concentrating on celebrating you know, our brand here in London Fashion Week as well. So still lots to do. Um, Jonathan, are you missing the Chinese tourists in London? Or, or are they spending elsewhere, or is it really a loss of revenue? Um, I wouldn't say we're missing them. We, you know, as I said, generally our tourist growth has been impressive globally, so it's just spreading around globally, So, you know, in the, even to, into the UK as well. So when you look at pockets of growth, where are you doing especially well, like regionally? Uh, regionally, well, our, 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 we, our quarter one results that we, uh, that we communicated in May, we showed you know, good, good growth in Europe, so Europe has been strong. Also very positive in Southeast Asia, APAC and China. And how's that Daniel Lee going? Sorry? H how's the new creative director going? So, uh, Sales are... Amazing, yeah. So uh, I think Daniel has this incredible talent for accessories. So um, I think he's probably, uh, in my opinion, he's one of the best creative directors that has an incredible lens on accessories. And for us, we, we also think it's a big growth area for Burberry. And um, we've now actually literally last week, we've gone live with Daniel's product into our stores. And um, super, super excited. And it's really great when you see the teams and the customers really um, appreciating the work that, that he's done. So we, we, we believe we've got a big opportunity in accessories, especially as obviously we have a big strength and ready to wear as well. So it's good. How do you explain this move to quiet luxury? It's definitely a trend. Uh, and I think, it, um, I think that's a positive trend. Uh, I think obviously logos and branding is always going to be really important for us. Um, we have uh, an icon in a check as well. So Daniel really believes that the check uh, is something that we can be a lot more playful with, not just in our in our Nova check beige colour, but he's actually embraced it in other colours. And this we call this blue our, our, our night's blue as well. So I think um, and Daniel naturally as a, and as a house, you know, I think Burberry is quite an understated brand, but there is a clear trend for, for things being less branded uh, and more sophisticated. And I think that also plays to Burberry's strengths as well. When you look at your supply chain or where things are made, do you think you know, a made in India or made in elsewhere will always have, at some point, have the, the luxury appeal that made in Italy or made in France has or made in the UK? I think customers look for ultimately the quality of the product. And uh, for us, we're bringing a lot more of our production into Europe, actually, particularly into Italy. So we're, we're bringing it more near shore than perhaps we were previously. But um, you know, I think more, more, the most important thing is the quality of the product uh, and you know, some things you can get made better in some countries versus others. So.
what, what are you? What's your biggest challenge in the next 12 months? The uh, biggest challenge is we, we, we're on a big elevation journey here at Burberry, which is super exciting. And I think it's definitely our moment. I think it's a market share for Burberry to have. Um, but that means really for us it's going to be about attracting uh, a, a bigger luxury customer into the brand, particularly for categories like accessories. So we're really focusing on, our, on the execution of our strategy, and, um, but really confident that um, you know, people are really appreciating and seeing what we're doing. And, you know, doing activations like this as well, I think people are, you know, it brings an element of surprise and they'll, they'll be coming into our stores, I'm sure. We also refreshed our, our website as well to kind of anchor into this new brand image and aesthetic that we have, and we launched that last week and also had a you know, big increase in traffic to our site since that was done as well. So in terms of execution, is it, is it going higher end or a higher net worth? Um, or bigger I mean, markets? Well, Burberry is a very democratic brand, but we do feel that we can play a lot more into that luxury space, and that means an elevation into certain categories, particularly for us. We felt, um, I mean, as you know, you know, we have probably the, the most luxury, iconic trench that we have that you know has been around for, for many, many years, and that is a true luxury product, handmade in the UK. You know, it's really the, the ultimate in, in, in rainwear. So we already have you know, good luxury product, our cashmere scarves, but we feel we can play more into that accessory space and other ready-to-wear. Categories. And how's demand in China going? Good. Yeah, very positive. Yeah, we're, no, we're, re we're really pleased. I think it's been great to have China back opened. And at, during um, that period, we were able to refurbish and refresh a number of our stores. And again, there's a huge um, awareness of Daniel and his talent. The Chinese customers are really sophisticated. They know their brands. They know their designers. So they're also super excited about what's, uh, what's coming into the stores. Jonathan, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. Thanks, Francine.